What's up, nerds? It's your boy. It's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It's the 19th day of December 2022. It's about 50 degrees and sunny and actually a little hot. Here at Site B, I guess winter is over and we're into spring. And today we are finally taking a look at Crisis at Crusader Citadel. Over the past week or so, I've been doing these little one-shots about the various members of the supervillain team, the Crushers. It has all been leading to this and why I think this is just such a perfect starter superhero role-playing game adventure. It is the adventure that came with the starter set for Villains and Vigilantes. It is an adventure that I have used dozens of times to jumpstart multiple superhero settings. And the reason why I love it so much is, one, the plot is just so simple that it's infinitely adaptable. And two, the villains are just so easy that they're also infinitely adaptable. Um, and it just works in any superhero setting. I've done Modern Day. I did a steampunk superhero setting. I did an outer space superhero setting. And I always start with this adventure, and it just always works. The premise is just so simple. It's literally, you know, one line of text that could jumpstart any superhero campaign. The city slash state's number one super team, the Crusaders, are missing. Nobody knows where they are. Nobody's seen them. And, of course, the criminals of the city-state are going crazy uh, and just doing these massive crime waves because there's nobody to stop them. And at the head of these crime wave is a villain group known as the Crushers, who up to now have sort of been a mishmash of various personalities, never really a standard grouping. There's been, you know, and they've never really worked well, but suddenly they seem to be organized and directed. And everything they're doing seems to have a purpose. So, of course, the, the authorities reach out to any available heroes in the city, state, to help them deal with the crusher crime wave. Enter the player characters. Uh, and basically, it's broken down into three parts. Uh, and the first two parts are basically just dealing with various teams of the crushers as they're going around on their quiet crime wave. And this is where it's infinitely adaptable because you can place it in any city and the crimes are generic enough that you could place them in anywhere in your city. Okay, they're all they're stealing things and all the, the, the things are sort of high tech, you know, but depending upon the place and the time, it, it, they could be, you know, robbing electronics warehouses, they could be robbing uh, depots, they could be robbing places that store electronics, they could be robbing super high tech your world's equivalent of Star Labs. It doesn't really matter. There are some, you know, in the adventure, there's some sample runs, but, you know, this was written in the late 70s. So some of the things they mentioned in the, in the module don't really fit in current 2022 technology. But you could easily just chase, you know, where would supervillains go in the town of your campaign if they wanted to steal a bunch of electronic equipment and a bunch of parts for, like, an aircraft? Okay. So that's the first infinitely adaptable. The second infinitely adaptable is you could just change up which group of crushers they met. And although it gives you examples of which team of crushers are met at which of the, the encounters, the great thing about the team is there's like wait, three, four, five, six, 12 members of the crushers. And they could infinitely be just adapted to whatever scenario. So they go to try and stop the crushers robbing a local jewelry store or a local auto parts plant or a local junk store or, or a local radio shack or whatever. And you could just choose the three or four crushers that you think best fit that crime and best would be a best conflict for the, the characters in your game, you know, uh, and it can be infinitely changeable. The only one they never really run into is Marionette and Mocker because they're waiting at part three. And then part three, of course, is they finally go and they break into the base of the Crushers, I mean, of the Crusaders, because all the clues lead to there. And they find out that the Crushers have captured the Crusaders and are holding them, and they've strapped them to the Crusaders' rocket ship. And what they've been looking for under this new direction of Marionette and Mocker is parts to make Mocker fully operational, and then parts to use the uh, rocket ship to jettison, send the various members of the crusaders into the sun to kill them but the main plot the reason why they've been stealing all these parts is that mocker the robot android 
is trying to take over the artificial intelligence in the Crusader's base, and he's trying to build himself a new body. That is the running theme of Mocker, is he's always trying to build himself a new body because he hates the head that the scientists gave him. Um, so he's always trying to replace it. So he's sending the crushers out who are operating under Marionette because she's got them organized with her mind control powers and her intellect to steal these parts, to bring them back to the Crusader Citadel so that he can build his new body, succeed in taking over the artificial intelligence that runs the Crusader Citadel, and then finally get his revenge on those meddling Crusaders by launching them into the sun. And of course, the heroes arrive and save the day. The crushers are captured. Mocker escapes because, you know, Mocker always escapes, probably with the help of Marionette. Some of the crushers you will run into again. Other members of the crushers you never see again. It's a constantly interchanging membership, just always under the sort of leadership of Mocker. Tech and maybe sometimes the real secret leader, Marionette, with her mind control powers. But yeah, that's what's just so great about this adventure. I've run it so many times, so many different ways, so many different versions of the, the characters, always setting it in either a make-believe city or the city that I'm actually in, and then adjusting it to fit that theme. Like when I ran it and the, the campaign was based in Nevada, I had them robbing casinos and going to the neon sign graveyard in Nevada and um, stealing slot machines not because they wanted the money but they wanted the parts to help um mocker you know when i ran the steampunk version it was the it, i made them all steampunky versions of the team so yeah plus you get an npc superhero team the crusaders who are pretty great standard starting super team you get an npc supervillain team you get some relationships you know temper hates dreamweaver shocker is secretly in love with evergreen um Mocker is always trying to take out Manta Man because he blames him and the secret, you know, and then Bull, the big strong guy is just in the center, occasionally spouting off very Zen wisdom. So, yeah, it's a really great module. If you can find a copy of it, great. Get it. If, even if you're not running Villains and Vigilantes, the scenario is infinitely adaptable. And as you've seen, we've gone through the her the villains. Now we'll go through the heroes, and we'll continue our deep dive into Villains and Vigilantes for the month of December. What do you want to see me explore in uh, January? Let me know. I'm the OGGM. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, support, share, check out my merch. And if you can find a copy of Crisis of Crusaders in Citadel, pick it up. It's good for any superhero role-playing game. It's infinitely adaptable. And speaking of superhero role-playing games, why don't, when you're done with this video, head on over to DM Bloodworth. And listen to him talking about the superhero role-playing game he's starting in 2022. Tweet 3, 2023. Link down below. Talk to you later. Crusaders! Curse you, Crusaders! I will strap you to this rocket ship and send you into the sun! I am Mocker.